Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Are you considering buying new computer hardware? Well, you're probably going to want to know the release date for several important launches over the coming months. RDNA 3, RTX 40, and of course Zen 4 on everyone's radar. And while we always have to wait, of course, until the product is released to know just how good it performs, Given all of the official information for Zen 4, for example, and all of the leaks that we've heard so far about everything, these next generation products are looking to blow the predecessors out of the water, which honestly they kind of should, given, well, it's a new generation of hardware and all. I want to start things out in this video anyway, focusing on RTX 40, then we're going to discuss Zen 4 and RDNA 3's release dates as well. And when it comes to RTX 40, there were some rumors that we could be seeing the cards launch as early as July. And if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know that that didn't really match up with what I'd been hearing. I'd been more hearing August to September. But honestly, updated rumors, you know, information can get old. Now, videocards.com, however, have received some pretty solid information from their sources, and honestly, Ycry's sources are pretty good, and apparently he's double sourced this information, that RTX 40 90 will release first in August, then a month after that we will see the 4080, and then a month after that we will see the 4070. I decided to hold off my video, though, yesterday, because I wanted to reach out to my own sources to find out what's actually been going on. Basically speaking, I've spoken to three people and one of them I trust pretty damn implicitly and they've told me that basically Nvidia are targeting the back to school season. Now this is American back to school and yeah that pretty much matches what Ycry is saying here. And when you look historically at Nvidia's release schedule and of course this can change from one generation to another like if Nvidia wanted to they could say you know what we're not launching RTX 40 even though it's not ready we're just going to launch it in February. Of course that's not realistic but they could decide to do that if they wanted. Honestly speaking, launching in August and September for their main products just makes sense because it's still probably going to be launching earlier than what AMD are. And yeah, RTX 40 is looking to be a very impressive product indeed. I suspect that when it launches, it's going to become perhaps one of the most important launches in NVIDIA's more recent history anyway, simply because they're facing so much competition with AMD. Ultimately speaking, it's not just performance, of course, but software, marketing, and a ton of other stuff which goes into how successful a product launch is. And it's going to be also curious, not just in the desktop, which, to be honest, predominantly I'm focused on, but also mobile as well, as I suspect one area that NVIDIA are going to struggle in will be power consumption. It's going to be very curious to see what lower TDP models or whatever end up, well, just to basically how everything fares against the, you know, AMD uh, mobile SKUs, because I suspect that we're going to see some really impressive things, um, especially before N33-based products. Again, um, it's kind of early to know, um, but I am going to be very interested to see how all of this plays out. According to videocards.com, though, rather interestingly, AD102 and AD103 are utilizing the same board, but the 1490 specs are now locked in at 126 SMs with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 mem uh, 6X excuse me, memory, 384-bit bus. Now, to my understanding, yeah, the 4080 specs haven't been entirely locked in yet, and there does seem to be some flexibility. This is one of the reasons, of course, that AMD are being so cagey with its own hardware as well. Quite honestly, neither company wants to blink at this point because just a very small difference in specifications. Now, clearly, what they can't do is just re-engineer AD102 entirely and say, well, we're just going to add like a whole bunch of additional SMs over the maximum, which is 144. They can't just make it like 180 the last minute. That's not realistic. But what they could do, for example, is the SKU that was supposed to be the 4070 Ti, which inevitably will launch in the future. That's just a guess, but I'm sure we can all agree that it's very probable. That SKU perhaps would instead become the 4070 if they feel that they need to do it for competitive purposes for AMD. 
or perhaps they can just crank the clock frequencies up or do whatever they need to do and vice versa for AMD themselves. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out over the coming months. And shifting our focus to AMD though, um, obviously the big two products that everyone's focused on for them on um, the desktop side anyway is both RX 7000 series aka RDNA 3 and also Zen 4. So RDNA 3 launches either October or November and to my understanding anyway Zen 4 may launch a little earlier than that by around a month. Although this information is also contrary to what I'd heard previously where AMD wanted to launch Zen 4 and N33 first and then N31 launches a little later on. Basically, the release dates for AMD seem a little up in the air at the moment. What I can tell you, though, is that the chips are being bought up right now. And overclocking, especially when it comes to memory, seems to be coming on really well. I've actually heard from a couple of sources that the memory divider basically can run one to one up to 6000 MTS. This is not super surprising. In fact, Robert Halleck in a recent interview kind of hinted that memory can go absolutely nuts on the Ryzen 7000 series. Again, we don't really know enough yet in terms of how the architecture will scale across memory frequency as well as memory timing. We could certainly do some guesses based on our previous knowledge of Zen and also what some of the changes we know they've included or incorporated, shall I say, in the new architecture, but we don't 100% know yet. To me, it's gonna be very fascinating to see how the faster memory speeds as well as memory timings, but you know, memory timings on DDR5 are not as tight anyway, so that's kind of an interesting uh, balancing act. I'm going to compare against something like a 5950X and also what, let's say, an 8-core Zen 4 is going to do versus a, a 5800X 3D with different memory speeds. Obviously, they are very different architecturally, but I'm just very interested to see how memory timings and memory speeds and so on affect the different architecture. As for Raptor Lake and its clock frequencies, I still don't know 100%. A couple of people have told me that AMD could have a clock frequency advantage, especially when it comes to basically not needing such exotic cooling. But honestly, we are not looking at final retail samples at this stage, so things can change. I've heard up to 5.8 gigahertz on lightly threaded apps. In fact, you know, it's possible it could go up higher if it's like, you know, heavily overclocked and you've got the right AIO for it. I'm not guaranteeing that. And as always with this stuff, well, with overclocking, of course, your mileage may vary. So the con lottery, yada, yada, yada. But I think that the next generation of products is going to be really interesting. Um, I think AMD... Yeah, I, I suspect it's going to be an interesting um, dilemma AMD has for the lower core count variants, the 6 and the 8 cores, and how they're going to market those, because obviously it's going to require not only a new motherboard, but more expensive DDR5 memory. Uh, this is one of the reasons I think the AM4 is not going to go anywhere. I suspect, although this is not from a source, I suspect... I suspect AMD are going to make a plethora of price cuts for their Zen 3 range. And if I were Intel, I would really hope, well, I just basically I hope Intel will decide to put more unlocked SKUs in the lower end segment, so the i3s, the i5s, um, because I think that giving users that option of flexibility could be really beneficial. Um, Intel could actually do really well on the lower end against AMD, but ultimately we've not seen benchmarks yet comparing against one another. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how all of that plays out. Um, hopefully you have enjoyed today's video. I know that I said that there's gonna be a PlayStation 5 Pro video coming on the channel. Um, that's not going anywhere. It is gonna be still launched, although I am delaying it a couple of days because I'm trying to find out a little bit more information on something else. And I would rather put a video up which is as complete as possible rather than just throwing it and then like a couple of days later, I'm like, oh, no, wait, I actually, someone else told me that. So I'm just trying to find out a little more and then hopefully that'll be out in the next like couple of days. I've basically written the script, but I've had to rewrite a certain section of it. Um, and yeah, I'll probably talk about what I had to rewrite in the video. But um, with that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did like it, well, come on, guys. You know what it, you do. It's like YouTube land. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.